talked about solvents, these guys have been talking about VOC, they are almost synonymous. We're going to talk a bit about VOC. VOC stands for volatile organic compound. Well, compound's a simple word, so we don't have to worry about it. That just means a collection of um, atoms. Volatile means that it has the ability to change from a liquid to a gas. <clears throat> and that gas we in interact with either via smell through our noses or we can ingest it and we, we can um, uh, breathe it in. <clears throat> And VOCs are ubiquitous. They're all around us. Um, there are some very pleasant things, like the smell of a rose, which is, some, uh, is a VOC. Um, and some of them are captains in, um, in degenerating wastes, are rather unpleasant VOC. And uh, there's another pernicious VOC that um, my younger colleagues tried to um, uh, wrap me up uh, in the other night. And, and this one goes by the chemical formula. It's, um, it's a there's a couple of um, carbons in it. So carbon means it's, um, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, organic. So this rather nasty material, and they actually served this up to me disguised as hot sake. And, and it worked. It certainly had a, um, a, an, a, an, an adverse effect. But the liquor industry, of course, they're very proud of their VOCs. In fact, they put them on their bottle and the more the better. And we as consumers will often go along with that and, and um, move towards the, uh, the product with a higher level of, the, uh, of, of VOC. But you know, VOCs do cover an enormous range of, 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 of products, from some fairly bland materials to some fairly uh, toxic materials. And there's not very much distinction made uh, between the two. The distinctions that are made are you know, what is volatile. And the European um, jurisdiction have decided that volatile is a liquid which boils at 250 degrees Celsius um, or less. And organic, of course, means it's based on carbon, such as this material um, here. <coughs> the other element is also what political lobby is, um, uh, is, is acting. Because on almost every jurisdictions as to VOCs, you will find some exemptions. Australia, which follows the Europeans, have exempted acetone. Now, acetone is a highly volatile organic material. It's a, it's a ketone, it's a Schedule three ketone, and the old classification of it is a Schedule three poison. There's no question that this is a toxic, volatile organic material, but it's exempt. And in Australia, one doesn't have to declare acetone level um, in paints. Just to even the, um, the ledger, they have included ammonia. Now, ammonia is an inorganic material, so clearly not a volatile organic, but nonetheless, just to prove that they are Aussies, they've, they've, um, they've done this too, just to add to the confusion. I mentioned earlier that Waterborne paints like solvents, particularly like things called a coalescing solvent, which is a solvent which is added to help the film form um, well, particularly in cooler environments. It'll evaporate off and leave a good hard film um, behind it. The most popular material is a probably called Texanol, both technically and commercially. Around the world, this was um, the most uh, popular. Technical data sheets showed its boiling point as 246 degrees Celsius, clearly a VOC, made by Eastman, a very fine company who went along to the European Commission and said, you're not going to believe this, but we've actually been measuring that boiling point wrong all of these years. And now that we're measuring it by this other method, a much more accurate method, and the boiling point comes out at 251 degrees C. Of course, it's not a VOC. Uh, any longer, and the European Commission accepted this, um, uh, this argument. Um, and consequently, a material which was VOC was suddenly not um, um, VOC. The Europeans and the Australians are tyros when it, com uh, when it comes to exempt materials. 
in America, there's a list as long as your arm because they, they take political, political lobbying to an nth degree. In fact, they have a, a material uh, in their list which is, um, it's got this formula. It's got chlorine in it. Now, chlorine is absolutely a no-no with our environmental choice. We can have it neither in, in binders nor in solvents. It's got a benzene ring in it. Um, so it's aromatic, and we're really trying to get rid of aromatics where we can. And then on this end, it's got fluorine. Not one fluorine, not two, but three fluorine. So it's a chlorofluorinated hydrocarbon, and we all know how bad they are, huh? No, it's exempt in the, uh, in, in, in the States. And, and in, in countries which accept the, um, uh, this, the States' um, methods. Uh, I work for a Chinese company who is supplying to Hong Kong. Hong Kong follow the States. The Chinese company is supplying a nitrocellulose lacquer loaded with this material and selling it as a low VOC. The other VOC in paints is a thing called um, propylene glycol, which is a very bland material. It's used in medicines, it's used in cosmetics, it's used in food, and it's used to help apply films, particularly in hot weather. It, it, it keeps it wetter for longer. And it helps brush marks to flow out. It keeps a wet edge so you can get back into paint. It helps bubbles break. Um, a very useful and a very bland material, but it's deemed VOC. And if we want to produce a material like this with zero VOCs, it's got to go from it. And it has gone from it. And there is a small price to pay. We've done some tricks to try and overcome uh, these things. But still, there is a small price to pay. And then furthermore, propylene glycol is a very useful material in tinters. It stops them from caking up and drying up and getting bits of dry pigment in your paint. Um, in order to give you a VOC paint, free paint, that's fine, but you need colours. So we've had to um, reformulate uh, all of our colours to move away from this bland material propylene glycol to another humectant, because we've got to have something to do with its job, which will stay in the film, doesn't ev uh, evaporate out, but does create a little more water sensitivity. And if I can just finish off a, a, a couple of points on, on this. Changes in, the, in, the, in paint technology are somewhat leaving the, uh, the regulators um, behind. I'll give an example. VOC levels are often given just over types of paint, such as semi-gloss acrylics or semi-gloss waterborne, and they will have a VOC new number of 50. And that's fine. So when we have a products like our Sonics, which has its origins back in semi-gloss resin, the very first paint we ever made, this is traditional technology battling in a traditional um, um, ground, and when it's out there fighting for its market spot, it's edging aside other technologies of its type. So it's good. But it's doing just, it's, it's not bringing anything new to the market. It is, it, it's, it's a, a, a me too. Whereas Luster Krill is an acrylic enamel. It's also a semi gloss acrylic, but it's got some other properties in it. It's got some very sophisticated polymer engineering, which ends up with a film which is much closer to an enamel film. It's, it's solvent resistant, stain resistant, block resistant. You can put it on joinery. And when that competes in the market, that competes against semi-gloss enamels. Now, semi-gloss enamels are loaded with VOC up to 350 grams per liter. So that's battling away and making a significant contribution to the overall aspect of VOC uh, use in the, uh, uh, in the country. If I were able to make a solvent-borne one with 200 grams per liter of VOC, Environmental Choice would say, welcome, my Beamish boy. What a beautiful um, product. Yes, we can use that and have an Environmental Choice tick. But Luster Krill, if it's at 55, no, you can't. And so they would pref we could have the situation where they would prefer a product with four times the VOC doing the same job than one um, with, with a quarter. And, and it's really a question of, I guess, a a adjusting as technology is changing. Um, there's no, if my VOC is 50, if it's really nasty and toxic or it's very bland, there's, there's no difference. So there is some issues um, still there. 